Hello everyone, how are you doing today? I hope you're in good health and uh, staying safe and trying to make best of, uh, of current situation right now. My name is Druti Patel and I'm here to talk about a live session on 10 mistakes you might be making while canning at home. Uh, so before we start, I want to make sure you're able to hear and uh, see me very well. So click on Wolf uh, uh, Smiley Face if you are able to hear me very well. All right. And um, okay, thank you. Um, all right. So let's start. So let's start with the very fir very first thing, uh, a little bit about m myself and what I do. Uh, my name is Druti Patel, and uh, I, I'm a family and consumer sciences educator uh, with the University of Maryland Extension. Uh, as part of my work, uh, I bring in research and scientific knowledge to our average population. I translate them. I make it applicable. I make it hands-on. So those uh, medical and those scientific uh, terminologies make sense to our day-to-day our -day people. Um, I'm very excited to actually introduce you to this live, especially mostly because I actually do in-person session on food preservation um, in the kitchen setup where I talk about, uh, you know, a food preservation method, maybe canning, drying, freezing, fermenting, and then the next se uh, next part of that session is to go in the kitchen, make a product, and then process it. Uh, it's a very interactive and hands-on piece. However, I cannot do it in current some circumstances because we are at home, uh, we are trying to be safe, um, and I still wanted to make sure I provided education in, the in my best capability uh, as possible. So here I am uh, trying to convey the same uh, message on an online platform. This is very new to me, so please be patient with me. Uh, I'm going to give you uh, uh, just a, one more minute to settle down if you want, and then we'll start our session quick. And I do apologize for the sound of a dog and a cat in the background. Uh, we are, we are all in one, uh, uh, in one space. So, apologize if you're hearing that. I cannot uh, cancel those sounds yet. All right, let's start with the very first mistake uh, of canning that might pe uh, people might be making. So the very first mistake is actually to switch uh, the processing method. And I can't tell you how many times my audience or through, uh, through Ask an Expert or through email, I have heard this uh, switching uh, idea, um, mostly because uh, they, are sure they do not have water bath canner at home. So they want to over process their food to make it more safer. However, that is the last thing you want to do. Part of the reason is because uh, pressure canning is, uh, is made and created for low acid foods. So now what is low acid foods? Uh, low acid foods are something which is uh, uh, vegetables, meat, mixed food items, your soups and stews and broth, those all come under the category of low acid food. And on the other hand, we have water bath canner. Now water bath canners are something which is used to process high, high acid food. Foods. So what are those now? So high acid foods are something uh, that is actually uh, used um, that ha the foods are naturally has some amount of acid in it or some kind of acid is added in the recipe itself to increase the acidity of the food. So the classic examples of those are jams and jellies your marmalades, apple fruit butters, uh, your pickles, uh, you know, uh, those are definitely a great uh, a high acid food candidate. So they can be processed within water bath canner. Uh, never switch those up. If your recipe says to use water bath canner, please use that and don't switch the uh, processing. Now let's look at mistake second. Uh, using a wrong cooktop. And this always comes as a surprise to my audience and anyone I talk to about. Uh, you have to be very careful on what uh, cooktops you use. 
Uh, mostly because like smooth cooktops or coiled cooktops sometimes have an auto shut off setting um, uh, to it, which we cannot control. Uh, and what that does it is temporarily switches off your uh, your coils or your uh, heating system for that moment. So you have to make sure you're not using the uh, you're you're keeping an eye on that. Now, if you were to use smooth and electric cooktop for processing uh, your water bath canner, that might be okay for the most part, uh, as long as you are sure that the water is boiling consistently. So you have to keep an eye. So play around with that first before you even plan your canning. Very, very important. The other thing uh, uh, is the pressure canner. You, I highly discourage you to use your flat, uh, flat uh, cooktops or uh, your uh, coiled uh, cooktops, electric cooktops, mostly because, first of all, pressure canners are very heavy. And when you add loads of uh, products in it, it becomes even more heavy, and it might actually uh, you know, damage your cooktop. The second, again, our goal with the pressure canner is to keep consistent pressure within your jars, right? So uh, if in order for you to do that, uh, you have to use a gas cooktop because... With the auto shut off uh, uh, setting, it will not be able to keep consistent pressure. So be very careful on that. Play around with it first if you're using water bath canner or invest in the gas burner if you are planning to do uh, pressure canning. All right, mistake number three. Uh, not using right tools for canning. Very, very important. Uh, and now, for most of you, this may not be a surprise to use mason jar, but I've also heard many people talk about repurposing jars with a metal lid on it or things like that. They are very unsafe, and I, I, I please request you not to use those. Your ideal mason jars are going to come in three pieces. This is just one of them I had at home, and I have one more, a smaller size one. For jam, uh, jellies. So basically, what you do is that there are three parts to the can, canning um, jar. You have a glass jar here, and then you have a sealing lid, which has a seal around it. Very, very important, mostly because that seal kind of uh, situates itself or settles itself on the glass jar when you're processing your food in the canner. So very, very important part. And the third is a screw band which goes on top of the jar. So that is your mason jar, very important uh, part. Uh, now, choice of your jar size will vary with the kind of uh, food you're making. Many times, if you're using tested recipes, they will give you recommendation of what kind of jars you need to use, right? Uh, also, uh, the, if you are switching uh, the recommended size jar, your processing time and canner will change too. For example, if you are using a half pint jar, when it says used to use one pint jar, you have to make a processing adjustment, which is usually provided to you when you are uh, you are using a tested recipe. Very very important thing to remember: do not ever miss making those adjustments based on the size of jars you use. Very important. The other part that I want to talk about is a canning toolkit. If you are already an experienced uh, canner, uh, first of all, share some hearts here. We want to know that you're an experienced canner uh, and you have been doing this for some time. If you are a newbie and if you're just starting to uh, starting to uh, start canning and you're really excited to get a dive into it, hit like. I want to know that too. Great, thank you. So while buying canning toolkit, you have to look at a couple of things. First of all, you have to look at what it says. Now, irrespective of the brand you use, now here in this canning toolkit, you see three tools, right, in the pack. On the other side, here I have, I don't know if you can see it. Let me move it a little bit. Okay, here there are five tools. So obviously we would say that, hey, five, I'm getting five tools in a toolkit, right? <clears throat> So I should get that. However, that toolkit with five tools may not have all the uh, tools that you actually need. 
Like, for example, the one that I just got showed you, the five tool ones, uh, they actually are missing one very important tool. So that's why I had to buy other, other toolkit. Now, I considering current times, uh, I couldn't find a tool toolkit with everything that I needed it in for. So I just had to buy two. I don't want you to spend too much time on it. So please don't do that. Uh, but here are the staple tools you will need if you are to start canning. The very first thing is a jar lifter. You see that? Now, the interesting part is when I'm teaching the workshops, many times my audience picks up jars like this. Now you see there's a curvature here at the bottom. This part is meant for the mouth of the jar, to grip the jar. So never use it like this. You're supposed to, there's a padding here, so that is meant for your hand. And so you use this part for jar and this part for your hand and you lift your jar from it. So this is a very handy tool, helps you to uh, not burn yourself and not hurt yourself. Very good tool. The other thing that you have to remember uh, is the tongs. Tongs are very, well, comes very handy while, uh, let's say if you're sterilizing your jar, you wanna get the empty jar out of the boiling water or from the oven, you use this. This comes very handy too, very good tool. The third one, which is my favorite because it always saves me from burning my hand, <laughs> is the magnet. If you see this little part here, that's a magnet. So what that does, is actually it picks up your lid right here so that's a very handy tool especially mostly because you're not supposed to touch the inside of the jar of, of this lid so this helps you to prevent that without touching that inside part all right and last not but not the least the one missing tool that wasn't part of my five tool kit was this part and this is so important i cannot say it enough uh, this is uh, a, a tool that measures uh, your headspace. And now let me see if I can share that with you. I'm not sure if you can read it, but there are markings here if you notice it. Right? So these markings are very important because they're going to help you measure your headspace. Every tested recipe will provide you this information on uh, how much headspace you need and... Uh, you use this for measuring it. So let's say you have food, right? You have food till here and you want to measure it. Uh, let's say if it says about uh, one and a half uh, inches. So you press it like that and it will be able to measure your headspace. Very, very important tool. The other good thing this uh, little tool does, it helps you to uh, use it as a stirrer. And what that does, it, it, it is going to remove all the air bubbles from your product. And again, you don't want any air in your product when you're canning, right? So this helps you with that too. And again, as I said before, it wasn't part of this toolkit, right? So make sure, and, and there might be other things too that you'll find, but however, you have to make sure you have this tool, the stirrer and the headspace uh, tool. You need tongs. You need a magnet and you need jar lifter. So all four of those uh, are very, very important. So make sure whichever toolkit you buy has these four at least. Uh, very important tools, okay? All right, the fourth uh, and a very important one, which I always get uh, questions about, is adjusting the ratio of the food. Now, let me tell you this. Uh, if your recipe says a ratio uh, that you are supposed to use, please do not change that. Um, mostly because when you're altering the ingredients like sugar, fats, thickeners, they are changing the acidity in your food. And the moment you change acidity in your food, guess what happens? You are risking your food for having more bacterial growth in it. Because that acid is something that loves to protect against those bacteria. So you have to make sure you're not changing those ratios. Very, very important. The other thing that also affects the kind of the quality of the food is changing the size of the food, right? If your recipe says to slice it, and if you're chopping it and dicing it, it's going to ch uh, change the amount of processing is done to that individual piece of food. So please don't do that. Um, and keep the size consistent too, uh, so that you know you are getting a very even, uh, evenly distributed and very well cooked food or the item. 
Uh, the last thing, and this happens a lot, and this comes from, uh, you know, as much as me, nutritional side of me wants to say, please use fresh produce, please use fresh items, you know. I will never say that uh, for the canning, mostly because the, re uh, the actual fresh lemon juice that you get from lime or lemon, uh, we do not know acidity of that. So if your recipe dictates uh, to add lemon juice, get the bottled lemon juice, it will tell you 5% acidity because they have already analyzed, they have done the work for you. So in terms of canning, pickling, fermenting, and any of those sorts, if you're preserving food, use bottled lime juice, lemon juice and not the actual lemon juice, okay? All right. The fifth one, uh, again, not using tested recipe. Uh, this is a hard one. This is a very hard one whenever I come across this question uh, when my audience say that they have this uh, recipe passed down from generations and they love using it. And it breaks my heart to tell them, please not use it, mostly because in those times, uh, we did not have those testing capabilities. We cannot, there is no mechanism by which we can assess the quality of the food that is going to come out of the, that recipe. So it's very, very important for you to not to do that. Um, I understand the se sentiments, but safety is always going to come first for me as an educator. I want you to be safe and confident that, okay, the product that you have made is good to eat and it's not going to harm you. So for me, that always takes a priority. So please, please, uh, if you have recipes like that, use those recipe for cooking, you know, enjoy that part of the, you know, that love that is passed down from generation, but please do not, um, you know, use that for preserving your food. I highly, I highly request you to do that. Um, when I talk about tested recipe, they are mostly lab tested. And what do I mean by that? They are done under a research guideline. They are done in the laboratory, which estimates the, uh, you know, the, uh, the heat, uh, the thermal uh, temperature, acidity, pressure, uh, the, the nature of the food, everything. They consider everything. And then they share the information or the recipe to you as an audience to make sure that if you are following the directions correctly, you're mostly going to have a very uh, a very safe food for consumption for a long period of time. Uh, the lab tested recipes are also approved by FDA standards and USDA standards, so uh, definitely that gives us more assurance. The next is uh, avoid using the cookbook. So even if, let's say, the blogs are posted by extension or on a national website, there are certain recipes that are posted. Again, that's a trusted website, right? Uh, if those uh, information is, uh, you know, well behind 1997, like before 1997, please don't use them. Mostly because those uh, those standards have been changed. The safety guidelines have been changed uh, since 1997. So anything before that, uh, you should not be using. Uh, so make sure you look into that too on when that recipe was published or created. All right, so I'm going to stop for a second. I'm going to uh, see here if we have any questions. So feel free to type in your questions if you have any. Um, I'm going to wait for a second to see if I see any questions here. All right, I'm seeing a couple of comments. Okay, thank you everyone for your encouraging words. How long will refrigerated pickle last? Okay, that's a great question. So first of all, if it's a refrigerated pickle, uh, you should not be using that, that for more than a week's time. Uh, that's very important. The other thing I'll look into, just to, because I'm not sure what pickle you're talking about, uh, I will look into your recipe. Because if you're using tested recipe, Sharon, you should be able to see where, uh, for how long that product should last. If it's refrigerated, usually, and it's, if it's fresh pickle, then it should, uh, it should be good for a week. 
Can you please name resources at the bottom? Yes, absolutely. Don't worry about it. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, after this live session, uh, you know, um, is done, I'm going to add several links to all the webs, uh, all the tested recipes or the uh, resources I have right in front of me. So uh, don't worry about it. Any information I can share, I'm going to post those links. So come back to the live video on the uh, on this web page and you can find all the inform clickable information absolutely thank you what is your opinion on tatter lids Ta okay tatter lids okay um right now we don't have as many research evidence to actually um, give us the right guidance on if, if we can use those lids or not um, i can still look into it pat and then i can get back to you if you want uh, I have your question right here. The good part about live is that your comment stays in, so I can uh, provide individual reply to it. Uh, so so far, as far as what my knowledge is, as far as my knowledge is concerned, we it is not approved yet. Uh, but let me still do my research and get back to you. I'll I'll post it right and I'll respond to your comment right there. Uh, where can we get our canners tested in Southern Maryland? Oh, great point. Yes. Thank you for bringing that in, uh, that question. So like me, there are many amazing educators in our Maryland state who are discussing food preservation at, at very length. So what I'm going to do is that, as I said before, I'm going to add several resources. And one of those resources will be uh, our, our food preservation web page. And there you'll be able to see uh, the educator name. And then if it is a Southern Maryland, uh, it should be, I'm going to actually comment, reply to your comment here. Uh, and I'm going to give you information of our educator who, who provides education in Southern Maryland. So yes, I'll definite. And even Annapolis. Yes, we do have two educators. So I'm going to give you your, their contact information and I'm going to respond to your comment there. Okay, great. Any other questions? Okay, all right, so let's move move forward now uh, to our mistake number six. Oh, by the way, let's do this. Uh, I feel like we are coming from different parts of Maryland, or even if you are not part of Maryland, and if you're from other state, I would love to know where you're coming from. So how about this? Can you write your county name where you are accessing this uh, live video from and your state? So for example, right now I'm in Worcester County. So I'll write Worcester, Maryland. So uh, that's all I want to know because I love knowing where my participants are from. Just a little bit about you. Uh, it'll be really amazing. So just comment and just type in that uh, this is the county and this is the state I'm from. Thank you. All right. So... As we're doing that, let's move to mistake number six. All right, so not sterilizing canning tools. And again, this is another favorite question that happens all the time when my client comes in and says that I, these, are, these are packed can jars. I just bought it from the store, so they're already sterilized, right? I don't have to sterilize them. And I would say maybe part of the reason is that if, let's say, if you are choosing a recipe where your processing time is less than 10 minutes, then you'd absolutely need to sterilize your, your jars. However, if your recipe says like 10 minutes or 12 or 15 minutes or anything more than 10 minutes, then that's a good sign. Then that means you do not have to sterilize your jars, mostly because if you're going about 10 minutes, you are actually sterilizing the jar when it's processing in itself. So anything, remember that 10 minute rule, uh, you know, anything about uh, 10 minutes, you don't need to sterilize. But let's say if you're, uh, if you're sterilizing for less than 10 minutes, uh, what you processing for less than 10 minutes, this is what you need to do. Um, first of all, if you are a seasonal uh, preserver, then first of all, you need to look at your stock and look at uh, the, any signs of, uh, you know, damage or rusting that's happening in your glass jar and your screw band. Again, I'm talking about this part and this part. I'm not talking about the sealing lid, uh, mostly because that is only one time use. You cannot reuse it because that sealing compound uh, that's here, 
gets uh, gets loose and it gets uh, damaged by every single use. So the, uh, if it's not able to seal, then what's the purpose of it? And again, the good part is you can actually just buy this rather than buying the entire mason jar. So if you are, uh, uh, you know, storing your jar and the screw band very well, then only thing you need to invest in every year is this. Again, the expiration time for the sealing lid is one year. So remember that too. Within one year, you need to use that up, right? Now, if you are if you have just purchased your canning jars, and this is what you need to do, uh, you can either uh, boil the water and then immerse your glass and screw bands in it and st keep it st and sterilize that. Uh, if you're a little bit more peculiar like me, then what I do is after sterilizing it for about eight to ten minutes, I actually take that out and I uh, set my oven to 150 degrees temperature. Again, every oven is different, so make sure you have that range of 150 to 200. If you do, then that's great. Uh, adjust it between that 150 to 200, and then you can just uh, keep your sterilized jars, jars directly in the oven and keep it there till you're ready to pour your product in it. So that's, that comes very handy. It keeps your uh, jars warm for the product uh, because if your jar gets cold uh, and if you're adding hot water, it might crack. So just be careful on that. The other thing you can do is use sterilization cycle in your dishwasher. That's an easy way out too, so do that. For your, screw uh, for your ceiling lid, only sterilize them in a simmering water. That's all you need to do. Uh, you don't have to do anything else other than that. Now, mistake number seven, uh, processing time and altitude adjustment. Again, this is another surprising fact that many people don't think about. Um, just, uh, uh, a bo a water boils at different temperature at different elevations. So if you're my friend from uh, Maryland and, and the Garrett County or Washington County or Allegheny County, you live in mountain, you are on a higher elevation. So you have to make sure that you are actually adjusting your processing time based on the altitude. And see, again, this information is only going to be given to you by tested recipe. Every tested recipe will give you that adjustment in processing um, based on the elevation. So make sure you're using tested recipe for that. And um, as, I'm, as I mentioned in the previous slide too, that uh, if you're changing the size of your jars, your processing time changes too. So here in the little table, if you can see it, they have different processing time for that too. So again, it's all given to you. you all you have to do is just follow on it and prepare for it as best as you can. Um, all the homework is done for you. All right, mistake number eight. Uh, not resting your jars, a uh, like 12 hour rule. I'm sending you a lot many rules here to remember, but 12 is a minimum number. Usually we give, provide range for from 12 to 24 hour rule. So within that time, you do not touch the jars once you, so, okay, let me start from the beginning. Your processing is done. Uh, your jars are sitting in the uh, canner. If you're using pressure canner, uh, let it depressurize. Don't force uh, depressurize it. Just let it cool on its own. Very important. And once it is, uh, you know, ready to open, you open it, rest your jar in a, uh, on the counter or wherever you want to keep it. And then you do not touch it for minimum 12 hours. 12 to 24 is the, is the window frame. Uh, you're not going to touch it. <laughs> if you're like me, you have to uh, learn to be patient because I always wanted to clean that little surface uh, and it's really hard to stop yourself from doing that but please don't touch it uh, and once that 12 to 24 hour window period is done then you can go ahead and clean the jars label them decorate them uh, you know if you're gifting it to your loved ones or whoever um, you know do that but wait for those 12 uh, 12 to 24 hours window period very very important the other thing you want to remember is that you can actually remove the screw band after 12 to 24 hours of resting and again if you plan to do canning every year this becomes very good a uh, good tool to remember because good idea to remember because if you're keeping this on the jar uh, you are exposing that to air and it, it will it will start to rust so you have to make sure you remove this and just leave the ceiling lid on top and then label it and keep it in a 
uh, a safe place. All right, mistake number nine, not following storage guidelines. This is a big one too. Um, no food, including the preserved food, should be under the sink. Uh, it's a highly, highly unsafe place to hold it. So please don't use any kind of a damp uh, place or mo high moisture place or a place where there's going to be a lot of uh, temperature variations. Uh, like in summer, it will be very hot or winter is going to be, you know, um, below zero. So please don't uh, expose your jars or, or your food to that temperature extreme because the more you do it, the more you're expo exposing that product for spoilage. So please don't do that. The best thing to do is to use cool, dark, dry place. And that's where uh, that's where you have to house your uh, product in. And the best part, I forgot about that, uh, is that to use label, here I have given the template uh, with the name, the source of the recipe which you use, the processing time, uh, and the method you use, and the production time and the expiration time. It's always good because when we preserve a using canning method, we are talking about over a year uh, long time. And you may not remember everything or you have multiple people living with you and they may not know it. So it's always a good idea to label it so you know for how long those products uh, are gonna last and how you need to revolve it within your pantries, right? Uh, let's say if you have peat jam which is expiring within a month, versus a strawberry jam which has six months to go you can bring them uh, in front the peat jam in front so you can use that first right so oh, these are small little things but they help you so much in a big scheme of things and last but not the least is ignoring the signs of spoilage and uh I know canning is a lot of work, it takes a lot of time, but again, uh, you have to make sure your safety takes priority over anything. And so if you are seeing any of these signs like bulging lid, which is uh, which goes like this, it shows a bulge, uh, a natural color in your food, uh, rising bubbles, streaks of dried food, meaning you'll see a por portion of your jar looks very dry and it doesn't look the same as the rest of your jar. So that's a that's a bad sign of spoilage too. Sporting liquid, do not touch that. Um, uh, unnatural odor, uh, mold growth or, uh, or things like that. These are a very big signs of spoilage. So if you see even one of them, uh, please discard it. Please do not touch it. Please do not taste it. Just discard it. Your 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 safety and your health it takes much more priority over anything else. So, uh, no amount of canned food can weigh up to it. So, please 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 discard it if you have even the littlest of uh, uh, intuition that this is not looking right. Please throw that away. And now, what I want you to do is like I love to know if information I'm giving to my clientele is beneficial to them. Uh, there's a small poll I've created here, and I would love for you to just give me an answer to that. So in order for you to do that, if you're watching it on the phone, close the window of the Facebook Live, and open your text message window, and uh, in the message where you, you enter the phone number, uh, you will enter 22333. And then in the subject matter where you type in your text message, you will do DP200. And then hit send. Once you do that, uh, it will uh, send you a response back from Poll Everywhere. It's an app. It's an anonymous app. I'm not going to receive any information from you other than your response. Uh, it doesn't give me any. I don't have any access to that. So once the poll everywhere says that you are part of a poll, uh, I want you to then go, uh, go and look at the left side of the screen you're seeing where it asks you, I feel in applying information shared during this Facebook Live and click on whichever that uh, you think is um, most applicable to you right now. So just uh, use A, B or C. You can just type those alphabets and then hit send again and you'll be done and then i can go uh and talk to you more about our website and other resources
I will also, uh, once we are done with the poll and I talk about the resources, I'm going to address all your questions. So please hold on for a second. Yes, I'll be happy to repeat the instructions again, Cecilia. So what you will do is you'll open your text message box and then on the top where you write the number of a person, right? There you will type in 22333. And in the message where you type in your message to anyone, uh, you will write DP 200 and then you can hit send. So your phone number will be 22333 and your message will be DP 200. And once you receive the message from Poll Everywhere that you are part of a, a poll, uh, you can actually then pick your option of the question between A, B, or C. Pick any you want and hit send again, and I'll receive your poll. As I said before, I'm not getting any information from your end. Uh, it's all anonymous. The only thing I have access to is your response. It's all anonymous. The only thing I have access to is your response. It's all anonymous. The only right. thing I have Thank access so to much. is your I response. I think we are going to move now to our resources. All right. Thank you so much for all your responses. This helps me to know if I should keep doing these live sessions or maybe this is not beneficial and I should try something new or something different. So thank you so much. All right. So let's talk about and my okay. All right. So, uh, some of the but resources, I know quite a few, I mean, quite a few comments were there talking about, uh, you know, the resources. resources, where to go. All right. So, one of the resources so uh, of all the your programs, programs this helps me to know if I should keep doing these live sessions, or maybe this is not beneficial, um, it's a part and I should of try some program or called something Growth different. Needed. So, thank you so much. Growth Needed and Preserve It is all actually right, so a program that focuses all on preservation-related programs. And so, that is one of the programs that you can find. Uh, some of the resources um, have several of our communities in your communities workshops uh, and for the resources in your go. county. Right. So, so one of the resources, so as I said before, I'm going to add the link to uh, 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 u
to address all of it, please know that I am writing the comment on the other things I will comment so that you can see my response. No matter what, if I'm not talking right now, I'm going to do my page for you. The agency is going to be a very serious interest in the law of the law. Now, let's move to the next. Yes, absolutely. Trust me, hold the drive to the other one. It is amazing. Oh, I wish they had uh, uh, a virtual um, look, but they don't. However, what money you might be able to get the second I know on Amazon sometimes they also put it with new books. Trust me, you can get the new books and they can see the new books. Again, make sure I will make sure that 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 I will
live uh, session if you think and somebody will be uh you know uh it will benefit someone uh you know share that i would love to see uh, more people understanding this method because in the end it's all about safety and enjoying uh you know our food preserved at home uh so i hope you all have a wonderful day productive day be safe uh stay healthy and try to make best of the current situation um take care everyone bye bye